Hello, my wonderful friends. How are we this morning on this very, very awesome happy hump day? <laughs> it is Wednesday here in Australia, and that means we're on the downhill run, of course, to the weekend, which is ridiculously exciting. Um, it's really funny, actually, that we, like, a couple of things. It's really funny, first and foremost, that I, well, not really funny, but I think it's really sad, actually, that so many people in the past have said to me, well, you know what, you shouldn't even look forward to the weekend, you should love what you're doing, like, you should be in love with your business all of the time, you know, blah, blah, blah. Basically what they were doing was they were putting their very own set of rules, basically putting their own set of rules and their own set of beliefs around what I should be thinking about all of the things. And I actually think that's total horseshit. I quite like my weekends and I really enjoy not working on them. So I'm really excited that we're on the downhill stretch. Now, I am late today because it took me... 15 minutes to get into my freshly laundered skinny jeans. Yes, my friends. Yes, all of those people that think we should not be wearing skinny jeans anymore. I think they're fine. And it took me half an hour to dry my eyelashes. So we're here though. So that's what's really, well, that's what's really important, right? At the end of the day. Exactly. Exactly. All right. So what I wanted to talk to you about, hello, Anna. Good morning. Happy Wednesday or Tuesday, depending on where it is that you're tuning in from. What I actually wanted to talk to you today is a little bit of an expansion actually on what it was that I was talking about yesterday. Hey, Rebecca, how are you? So lovely to see you there. All right. So what I was talking about yesterday was the I guess like the, the importance of sharing different parts of you, different elements of you, right? We were talking about making sure that you share some lifestyle things. We were talking about making sure that you're sharing uh, like th this dance between business stuff. Heidi, hello. How are you? Um, I hope you're amazing. You're always amazing. You know, basically it's all about how you can really showcase all of you, share all of you and the, the importance of doing that. And I guess like the main thing with this is that first and foremost, it's because, you know, we want to get to know you. Our people want to uh, not just look at you as a, or just know about, not just know about you as a service provider, but really ultimately know and get to know you for who you are right? Not just the service that you provide. And I suppose like one of the big things with this, if we think about it, the the thing that really, I suppose, differentiates, sorry, my, I'm trying to make sure that I get all of the things shared and stuff. So I'm getting distracted. I'm back. Uh, I'm, I'm back from the, dis, the land of distraction um, for a little while. My husband, we might get a special guest visit by my husband who happens to be bringing me coffee this morning, which is fantastic. So the, the thing is, is that if you are not sharing your personality, right? So what happens is that people start comparing, uh, kind of like uh, trying to compare apples with apples or apples and oranges or whatever. And this is where you'll end up competing on price, right? This is where you end up competing on the number of minutes that you might be providing to somebody. This might be where somebody's like, well, I can get 30 consulting hours from, you know, blah, blah person, and you're offering 10 consulting hours. And this is the thing, you know, you end up in this hole. And I'm not saying that that's a, a bad thing, but I don't ever want to be compared necessarily with, you know, apples with apples, with coach to coach, with marketer to marketer, with speaker to speaker, with um, brand expert to brand expert or whatever the case might be. The thing for me, what I want first and foremost is I want people to go, oh my God, you are my person, <laughs> right? It's why Heidi's still hanging around. I started working with her in what, like 2014, Heidi, I think. You know, it's it's why I've got some of the clients that I had in the room literally last week I've been working with since 2014, you know, it, or have been following me. Like one girl had started following me, one girl, one lady started following me, my page in 2012, right? It's not because 
Oh, well, like maybe they hadn't, I know some of them hadn't bought before, like literally last week. And part of that is because, you know, they were off doing their thing or whatever they were doing. But I don't want a decision that you're making based or, or, or your audience making on how many classes they might get or exactly Heidi. Oh, put your competitors away. I mean, it's smart, you know, it's maybe smart business to know what they're doing. But the thing that's going to make someone, and I know what you do, you know, the, the thing that's going to make somebody come to your center to enroll with you and to keep coming back is not just about the, the number of hours that you provide. It's about the culture that you have created within your business. And we do this by leveraging your personality, right? So the way that I view this, I, I actually, do you want to see something? It's really exciting. I think I might have said to you yesterday, I can't remember, I know I told someone, when I was riding into the spotlight, and this is, this is the thing that always seems to happen to me, I was riding into the spotlight and it's very much, as you know, it's very much, this is how you get out into the spotlight and, and all that sort of stuff. I had a new book come like bleh, out of my head and this is the plan for it. Oh, so exciting. So this is some brand new to you, brand new released uh, IP. So what I think for me personally, in, in all of the years that I've been doing this and, and studying human behavior and, and working with clients, hundreds and thousands of clients all over the world, there are three core things that make up your personality. The way that I see it is this, we've got our soul, right? We've got the science side and then the social side. So soul, science, social. Try saying that three times really fast. Three times really, try saying those three things really, really fast without drawing breath on. <laughs> soul, science, social. Uh, it's quite the tongue twister. But these are the three main things that make up your personality. And if we think about it, a lot of the time, what we'll try and do in different circumstances is we, we try and you know, wear maybe somebody else's personality or we might wear someone else's style in order to try and find ourselves. Now, I know for me personally, in, in 2010 and 2011, I'd, I'd left corporate uh, after working in, in one of the major banks for 12 years. Love that job. Like, love the jobs that I did, by the way. But I was like, right, I'm going to do my own thing. It'll be amazing. And for the first eight, eight months, I made not very much money at all. It was, it was really terrible. I was using Facebook to make money, though. Uh, but I wasn't making heaps of money and, you know, things needed to kind of shift and change. And I remember going in and, and started working with somebody in 2012. And they helped me massively. But... I kind of became almost like a little bit insecure, for want of a better word, a bit insecure about how I was doing things. And I kind of like tried on this uh, little bit more of a, like the personality that I kind of tried on for a little while was being quite bitey and quite, um, uh, like aggressive is not the right word, but almost, almost aggressive, um, particularly, you know, blunt, I think is the word that I'm looking for. I really tried hard to be quite polarizing, to be quite bitey and quite fighty. Now, I do have, I've had other seasons in my life where I've been like that. But for me, it was kind of like it took me back and I, and I kind of tried it on for about six months just to see, you know, is this really who I am? Is this really what I'm about? Does this kind of fit? And it didn't. It was like wearing a... Um, a, a jacket that you just feel really shit in, like where the sleeves are too long or they come up to here. And, you know, it's not like one of those fabulous sequin jackets that I wear all the time that feel fantastic, except they, one of them gave me a sequin rash under my arm. That wasn't very fun. Um, but it's like wearing, it's like sometimes you've got to try something on. So when I, I trained to be a style and branding coach back in 2010. So that was all about how you leverage the power of, of your physical presence to create a powerful brand, to create that, oh, who's that? When you walk in the room so that people are kind of like instantly magnetized to you and, and how you are. And here's the thing that we know about that, that that comes from the inside out, right? It's just that the wrapping, the, the ribbon that we wear on the outside can help to kind of cut through. And how this plays in when I was in, when I worked for the bank, I was very sooty. I was very masculine dressed. 
And, and I loved it, you know, I, I thought it was great. But then when I, I started to learn a bit more about style, I was like, oh, this is kind of fun and branding. And I, and I went from, I, I basically swung from being all the way over here in terms of super masculine, right? To in terms of my style and how I would, and you know, what I would wear to swinging kind of like the, oh, all the way over this side to being like ultra feminine. So I'm talking like, you know, the brand review, they, they've got all these gorgeous, I don't know if they still do these now, actually, I haven't looked at it for forever. Oh, I told them you were coming. Thank you. <laughs> Coffee delivery. Thank you, baby. You're welcome. <laughs> that was my husband delivering me coffee. So, uh, swung all the way around to being ultra feminine and then using, uh, I'd wear a lot of these, a lot of the review dresses. So they were very structured, like kind of like structured bodices, tiny little waists, and then big skirts. And, and I love that. But then you're right, Rebecca. Yeah, he's right. We won't tell him that all the time though, because he'll get a big head. So he is the best husband ever. So for me, it was kind of like going like all the way over here to coming like all the way over here and just going like, oh, wow. Okay. And then what happened was I kind of settled somewhere in the middle, right? But it took me trying on these different styles to find my kind of groove, right? And so for me, I like to think of my, my style as an example. I like to think of my style kind of like glam, rock, it's not much punk, but you know, kind of like, like that's the type of style that I want. Lots of black, um, lots of fun, a bit edgy, uh, but still feminine, right? That's how I want to be perceived and how I want to be seen and what I feel really comfortable and what I feel really good in. And of course, sequins, because you know, sequins, every day is a good day for sequins. And so with your personality, sometimes like we, we've got these different elements of ourselves, right? But the thing, the first point that makes up your, your personality being your soul, there are things that you can't kind of undo or, or not acknowledge. So one of the things that I like to think about with this is if you think about, take, take away everything that you think that you know about why you're here, right? Yes, Heidi, you definitely need to let the oddball shine. Yes, yes, yes. You're so, you're so amazing. You're so funky. I, I love it. You're awesome. Um, hi, Kim. How are you? So with your soul and, and things like that, the kind of thing that I think about with this is like, it's almost like, who are you at your very core? What do you feel like you were here to do? I believe that we've all had this um, before we, before we were born, I think, I like to think that we made this agreement around what it was that we were going to do on this planet. And so this might sound a little bit woo, but for me, I'm kind of like, there's, there's an, a natural thing for me where I have all of the words. I rolled up to skating yesterday and one of our, um, one of our skaters said, Oh, I love that thing that you wrote. I was like, which thing? I wrote, I write lots of things. I'm not quite sure which one you're talking about. I have lots and lots of words all the time. Now, I used to think that that was a bad thing, right? And, and I mean, I'm resourceful around it. If I wasn't listening to people, then that would be problematic and that would be unresourceful. But I have a lot of words to say. I listen all the time to people as well. So it's like it's in balance. But I do believe that one of the things, and this is like your soul gifts, what did you what do you believe is kind of like your soul gift what do you believe you're here to do and and there's like uh, i did the course um a number of years ago where i learned about the different kind of soul types that there are and there's divine self-expression divine power divine compassion divine love and, and a whole host of others and i like to think well you know if one of my soul gifts is this ability to to act and and be divine self-expression, then, you know, I've got to really own that as part of my personality, right? I also know that one of the things that is is really awesome about me, and, and I want you to think about what's really awesome about you, and there's no shame in this. It's not about, you know, I'm, I'm really awesome at blah, 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 and I'm so much better than everybody else. It's not about that. It's just about owning these concepts, these aspects of you. So I know I can use a lot of words all of the time. The other thing that I also really know is that I've got this kind of this ability to, to listen to what people are saying and kind of go, oh, you could do this with it. And then, 
you know, almost like show you how to magically, like how you can work all of that to be able to make money, to be able to go out and help people. And it's like this kind of alchemy that uh, not everybody can do that. And I used to think that everybody could do this kind of thing. I was like, I don't, I don't realize like that, that people found this stuff so hard or so challenging because I just, I find it really easy. I see the potential in other people. So for you, when we're thinking about what your soul kind of gifts are, it's like, what do you feel like your mission here is, is on this planet while you're in existence? What do you feel like are your natural gifts that you can use, not just in, in business, but the things that you're really born for, right? It, it might be that the thing that you are really awesome at is, is nurturing other people and making them feel really special, feel really cared for, and, and maybe you're the go-to person for that, and that's awesome. You know, it could be mothering, could be the, the perfect, uh, your, your main mission, whatever it is. So we've got the soul element. The second element is around the science. And what I love about this is that we can back this up with diagnostic tools. We can back this up with the data. We can back this up with, with um, all, the psychologic, all the psychology profiles and things like that. So with the science of things, to me, what, one of the big things that I tend to refer to is the, is the DISC model a bit like Myers-Briggs, it's a bit like Enneagram, it's a bit like all of those other things, there's personality tests and things that you can do. And, and what I like to think about with this is, well, you know, if you're naturally somebody who is very data-driven and very numbers-driven and you love case studies and you love researching and, you know, you love doing, I don't know, dissertations, uh, you know, whatever it happens to be, then own that right? Own that part of you. If you're someone who is slow to trust, but once you trust, like you're kind of like all in or, or you're the kind of person maybe that is just naturally, like I said, that nurturing person, own it. If you're somebody who's very driven by winning and success, freaking own it. That's awesome. What these things do is it, it helps you to kind of go, in, in my view of the world, it helps you kind of go, yeah. Okay. Great. I I I remember reading a book called Relentless, actually, um, by Tim Grover. He trained Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, uh, and a whole host of other elite athletes. And when I was reading it, it's a little bit like this personality profiling stuff. It helped me to kind of go, oh, I'm not. Maybe I am a bit of a freak, but you know, I'm not this freak of nature. I don't, I'm not the only one out there who. Um, is is very driven by success, but also really loves to be part of the story and to you know be be part of the party and and all of that kind of stuff. So it helps you to kind of go, oh, okay, well this is this is a this is a bit like how I'm wired, and and that really makes sense. One of the other things that I learned about myself a couple of years ago, and it was more a confirmation of something that I do almost innately is that I know that I get great ideas when I'm moving around, right? It's part of the reason why I love walking in the morning. Uh, it's why when I'm delivering, like I'm kind of like I'm walking, not like that because that's really weird. I wouldn't be walking like that. I'd be walking like a normal person. Uh, like, but walking up and down on stage and kind of like rubbing my hands together, letting the alchemy kind of come through Knowing that that's one of my drivers or one of the ways that I can access my intuition or access my genius or access my knowledge, then it gives us a, a really good way of being able to leverage your personality, right? So you can do that online. You can do this in your marketing. You can do this in your delivery. You can do this in your webinars. I, um, I used to always be on camera when I was running the free webinars to make sure that you guys could see me. And sometimes I'd be standing up and walking around and other times I'd be sitting down. But one thing that you will notice, and this is again, this is kind of like about that innate stuff. Like I, I talk with my hands. It's part of the way, I mean, I'm situation appropriate, obviously, depending on you know where I'm presenting. But most of the time I talk with my hands and what that kind of allows me to do, the way I think about it, is it kind of allows me to pull the ideas down from wherever they are and bring them in and then, you know, kind of use them. So that's that's a little bit of a mix between the soul and the science part. And then the next part about your personality, the way that I see it is like your social side. So the way that I am 
in person, the way that I am online, the way that I am at skating, the way that I am at events, the way that I am everywhere is how you see me today. Until we're finished and then I'm like, get me in a room without any people and let me go to bed by 7.30, please. <laughs> I like to like the, the, that introvert in me is like, okay, I'm peopled out now and I'm done. So what we tend to do from our social personality is we'll often make adjustments and we'll change. And I'm not talking about your social media personality. I'm talking about how you are when you're with your friends, with your mates, when you're out socially with your, with your partner, your husband, your wife, whatever. Uh, or out with your kids, you know, when you're out with other people, that's a huge element of, of part of what makes you you. It's another facet of what makes you you. So if you really want to stand out online, if you really want to do the work that you are here to do, that you're absolutely born for, then part of the thing that you've got to do is to really tap into those three elements of your personality because that's the, that's the shit that, that's just that full stop. That's the shit, right? That's the awesome thing about you is your personality. And that's the thing that's going to cut through the noise. That's the thing that's going to help you stand out from the crowd. That's the thing that's going to help you to create content that feels really great for you. But sometimes what we've got to do is, you know, kind of try on these different um, characteristics, if you like, to, to work out what feels the best for you. The side benefit of doing this is that, you know, that old little, that, that old little chestnut, that thing around, you know, oh, I, I'm not good enough or I'm not pretty enough or I'm not glamorous enough or I'm not polished enough or I'm too polished or insert whatever that thing is, that, that negative self-talk, those fears, those, those shitty things, they can all go by the side, by the wayside. You know, if you can work out, all right, yeah, like my personality, my soul personality is divine self-expression. No wonder if you're not talking to anyone through the day or if you haven't written. I know for me, if I haven't spoken to people through the day and if I haven't written anything, I feel like I'm dying. Like that's when those little um, things are like, maybe I'm done. Maybe I'm a has-been. Maybe I'm past it. Maybe nothing's ever going to work. Maybe I'm actually not really good enough. Maybe this isn't the thing that I should be doing. Maybe there's something else that I should be doing. Maybe I should be happy just being a housewife, which as we know, that's a whole other conversation. I wrote a blog about that yesterday. What this gives you permission to do is to let all of that shit go and to really step in to you unapologetically claiming who you are. And, you know, you're absolutely amazing. And I can't wait for everybody to be able to see that because you deserve to be seen, my friend. Absolutely, you do. Yes, Rebecca, that old chestnut. <laughs> Alrighty, my friends. Now, if you want some help leveraging the shit out of your personality, come and join Contentology. You will see the link in the comments in there. It's only $97. We run for the whole month of May and maybe you'll be crowned. Pretend there's a crown going on. The queen of Contentology in May and win yourself $1,000. All you have to do is show up every day. That's it. And follow the prompts. That's it. And then we'll judge them at the end of the month and like all of the people will go into the short list and then we'll make the decision about who we think has been the badassest, badassiest badass throughout the month of May and you could win $1,000. So, which you can spend on whatever you like because I'll just transfer you the money. All right, my loves, have a kick-ass awesome and amazing day. You know what you need to do. Get yourself out there, go help some people, have a whole ton of fun doing it. But most of all, remember... That's right. The world is ready for your brand of awesome. Have a great day and I will see you tomorrow.